Good morning, everybody, and uh, this is your S&P 500 day trade setups for today. So, uh, as I warned you yesterday, <clears throat> when oscillators are grouped to the upside like that, typically it is indicating overbought, and we have pulled back ever so slightly. Um, just want to get this trend line in. That is essentially the first higher low, then there is the first higher high. Now we have a second higher high, and we are busy potentially with a higher low. So uh, at the moment, we're back in the, the channel that uh, we indicated early on in the week. But I think uh, at the moment, we're looking at the oscillators, probably either still some sideways of price action or a little bit further to come and test one of these tails down here. And uh, you might as well just add... Uh, well, let's just do this. So do that. And then... Something like that. I think these levels down here is going to start indicating um, a potential bear flag for a bigger move down. So uh, let's just delete that one. I don't think that one's necessary. Oh, this is the area to watch here. Now, if we draw dropping below this area, come back and retest this zone, then I would expect um, a flag to be in play, and we're looking for a continuation down. Uh, we do have a fractional now at the top, so there it is there. So pretty much potentially a bigger bear flag. Gaps are closed, uh, but what we want is we want break below structure before we start validating that, uh, because at the moment we do have a very strong bull bar on the weekly, and that was last week's bar. So um, yeah, I th for me, I think uh, this is something to watch on the lower time frames. We're in the zone that I've been looking for. Now the question is, uh, what is going to transpire? If you look at the three hour, you can see the oscillators grouping to the downside. More importantly, is the diversions that is forming. So here is the previous swing low. You can take any one of these here. Um, and you can see there it is there. And now we've got a current swing low forming. Uh, price is making a higher low where the oscillators are making a lower low. So there is a diversion. That is continuation diversions in the direction we're going, or we're going, which would be up. We're back in amongst the the faster moving averages at the moment. So uh, obviously we need to find support. And I think support for me at the moment is going to be 38.43. I need to be above that, find support there. And then we've got a potential to the upside. Uh, you just need to pay attention to, to that swing low there. Um, we'll get to all the levels now on the lower time frame. So looking at the hour, you can see we, we're sort of hovering here in this cluster of support. So we've taken out Basically, Friday, we're now busy with Thursday's uh, price at the moment. So there's Thursday's open or Thursday's low. So that would be basically the um, a break below that would actually start giving us uh, a little bit of confidence for a continuation to the upside. Right now, looking at the hour, we are above and below the moving averages. We are confused. We have no idea which direction we're going into. Uh, this range break to the downside is more than likely played out. So you just do that and then test it to the downside. So pretty much spot on. Uh, measured move to the downside is has played out probably potentially for a little bit of a, a little bit more. And I think this is the area I'd be paying attention to. So 3,800, um, as I mentioned yesterday, 3,800 is probably the ultimate downside target right now. And that's where we need to be waiting to see what is going to transpire. Now, the problem when we start looking at the 15, which is our intraday, as you can see how we tried to, to stay above it, but then at the US Open just plummeted through this area. It didn't come back and retest it. And if you look at the oscillators, we're starting to point to the upside again. I suspect we're more than likely heading for 3,800 and possibly 3,782 down here. Um, if we start breaking below 3,782, it opens up more downside for us and uh, and then I'd be looking to see where we you know looking for retests and then looking for shorts at the moment I want to see what happens in this area to see if we do have potential for an opportunity so Monday wasn't really much of a trading opportunity Tuesday caught me out uh, we did get the break let me just uh, put this in here there was what we were talking about on on the video yesterday looking for the break got the break Got the retest here. Nice opportunity for an entry. Um, pretty much a tight stop loss if you look at that. So you had uh, 120 points there. 
then you had another one here, which was 170 points, which is where I was looking to get in. And uh, basically, you got 200 points to the upside, but you were capped by the previous day's high. And we rejected that pretty strongly. If you look at this on the five minute, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you know, there was a range, range break happened here, but messy happened here again. One single exhaustion bar up, and then you start seeing this. So that's why I say to you, lower time frames are really important at the moment. So once you've got a, a decent amount of profit, just get out and uh, wait for the next structure. Uh, there wasn't even a bit of structure on the five minutes. If you look at this, we broke down. No retest of moving averages. No retest of of any breakouts, and uh, we just meandered to the downside. So for me today, pay attention to these zones. Uh, I would prefer. And you can probably just fine tune this one. So I would prefer for us to get above this area, which is 38.34, which would again be above the 155. Uh, find some support there. And then it would be a move back to 38.87. And uh, it would be an area to get out. Uh, alternatively, if we start dropping below the current low, it's almost like a, a similar kind of setup to, to yesterday. If we start dropping below that range, then I would expect a bigger move down to 3806, 3800. Uh, definitely not looking to chase it further than that. Um, it's only 130 points, so probably wiser just to sit and wait. See if we start building a base here, uh, maybe an opportunity for a move up. But back below the moving averages on the hours, so yeah, expect a bit of volatility, and then we'll have to wait and see whether it's going to hold or not. It's three hour. We don't, we've got a crossover on the three hour, which is um, worth paying attention to, uh, but we are below the 155. So obviously I want the crossover and I want it above the 155 before looking for an upward trend. Uh, pay attention to this trend line. I think this trend line is probably gonna explain every to us short, everything to us shortly. So trend line and 3,800. Break below 3,800, you have uh, 3,850 coming. You have 3,700 coming. Get below 3,700, then uh, should expect a free fall. One thing to note on the futures market at the moment, the um, open interest on puts and calls is sitting between 3,700 and uh, sort of 3,600. So that is where the bulk of the puts and calls are sitting. So in other words, that's where people are expecting, uh, the bears and the bulls are expecting the market to, to play in that zone. So expect just expect more volatility. I think that's basically what it boils down to. Probably lots of ranges, lots of sharp moves like we had uh, into the close of last week. Massive move up, massive move down, just complete confusion. So expect that to continue. Okay, anyway, that's kind of my view at the moment. Uh, again, 15 minute opportunities will be there and uh, it's basically to either side. So um, I am a little bit biased towards finding support somewhere for a move up, and that's just based on you know, what I'm seeing on the three hour right now. Eight hours still away to go, so you could see a break here and then a sort of a lower high, then that would sort of entice me to start looking for shorts more aggressively. But at the moment, uh, we've got a series of higher highs and series of, of higher lows. So, uh, and we've, we're breaking through previous highs. You can see there's a break, there's a break. Uh, the ultimate break is up here at 40, at 4,100, 4,000. I think 4,000 probably the best line in the sand. Get above that, hold above that, then you know, we've got the confirmation we're looking for for a reversal. But at the moment, clear to us that uh, any pullback right now is sold into exactly what happened here so um yeah that's kind of my view this morning just be cautious grouping of the oscillators at the moment is uh not filling me with much confidence and then if you look at these swing lows here look at the diversions here and that's diversions in the direction we're going so that's reverse diversions there so in other words low higher low low lower low so um, not lining up. So you would expect a, a squirt to the upside. So that's kind of what I'd be trading. And uh, 
So you're rambling a bit, but pretty important to pay attention to this. If you look at the five minute, you can see how we're in amongst the moving averages, moving averages coming closer together. Athletics group the upside, so I expect another leg down. But again, it could be just a quick squirt down and then a move up. So I'd prefer to wait for a break above a current high, which is 38.34. Break and retest above that, then I'm looking for this 38.87 area. Uh, any move below that, I think I'll just wait for the trend line rather and try and look for an opportunity to bounce off the trend line to the upside. So trend line is pretty strong at the moment if you look at it that way. Okay, anyway, that's kind of my view at the moment. Um, short, short or long scalps, just wait for the opportunity and then you'll get an opportunity into that. Hope it helps and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Cheers for now.